Hey there, Gemini. Welcome to your reading for the week of December 12th. Uh, we are going to jump right in here, Gemini, and we are going to look at your current general energies in this first row here. This deck is all messed up. And also, you just had the Six of Swords popping out, so we'll just put it to the side here. But it was just a pop out. But um, in your current general energies, you have the Sun, you have the Justice card, the Two of Swords, and the Fool card. So I feel for a lot of you that you need to move towards something more inspiring in your life. You have the sun <laughs> on that card, which is kind of like something that can get your attention. And sometimes I feel that the sun in the tarot, even though you don't have the sun in the tarot here, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I feel like sometimes the sun is trying to get our attention on something. It's like trying to get us to be aware of something in our life that either needs attention or could be very beneficial for us. And I kind of feel that energy for you here um, in this reading where there could be something in your life that's like very fulfilling, much more worth it for you, especially in work or business. Uh, definitely could be the case. Uh, you have the justice card here as well. I can't even get it off the table. I do feel that some of you are kind of like leaving situations that are no longer worth it. And um, well, I'll show you here. <laughs> I mostly say that because we go down to the Two of Pentacles and the Chariot. So, you know, the Justice card is about cause and effect. And it can say that we are looking at a situation and saying, you know, is it are we getting our energies worth out of this or not? And for some of you, I feel like you're moving towards greener pastures with the Chariot. On the Chariot, he's leaving behind the city that is behind him. And, uh, you know, it kind of represents, the city kind of represents a place that's full of competition, a place where maybe he can't live to his full potential. And I really feel that here for you, Gemini, that this Two of Swords is like saying you've been, I feel like you've been in just the same situations for too long. And you're wanting to go somewhere where you can live your full potential, which is like behind her right here. You know, this is originally and traditionally a card of initiation. It's a card of like being initiated into something. And, you know, it kind of represents, there's a lot of like Freemason imagery on the tarot. And the lady sitting in front of the water like this, it kind of represents an initiation that the Masons do. I'm not a Mason, although, I mean, there are plenty of people who claim I'm a reptilian and in the Illuminati, which I would never tell you anyway if I was. So there you go for you con conspiracy theorists out there. Now you're going to, that'll leave you guessing, right? But what I would say here is that this card here is about kind of just, you know, what I feel for you is it's like you're at the right time. You're at the right place to take a leap of faith towards something better. Even no matter which way we take the diagonals in this reading as well, it's like you're going towards something new. I mean, going up to the judgment card, literally these people are in their coffins and inside the coffin is like their old life. Outside the coffin is their new life. And we, this way, you know, obviously we go towards the chariot. So both diagonals <laughs> to me represent a new beginning. And even if we take it and pretend that we can read like this, look, if you take this diagonal, new beginning, if you take this diagonal, it's like you're stuck. So I would definitely pick something new to do at this time, Gemini. With the Justice card, you have this Affair card. I do feel like some of you dealt with like a juggler in the past, and you could just be receiving like karma or justice for that. I feel like you're receiving karma in the sense that it's something good, like you're being rewarded. So if you have dealt with a person who juggled you recently, like in the recent past, th this to me would say there's like something new coming in for you, like a new love affair, That's but not like an affair, <laughs> something good. With the Two of Swords, you have this organization card. Here's the problem. Here's my problem with organization is I think we should be organized right now, but I also think organization right now is super hard. So, you know, it's like if you're waiting for the perfect moment to do something, there's definitely not going to be a perfect moment for you to do something. I really feel we need to follow our inspirations right now. And our inspirations might not make much sense, right? It's like we might feel inspired to, you know, start a, a baking company, but maybe we've never even opened an oven in our life. Maybe we, are, we just make TV dinners, right? Maybe that's all we know how to do. So your inspirations might not make sense. And if you're waiting for the perfect moment, to do something, it's never going to happen. So I would just get moving towards whatever you feel inspired to do. Uh, with the Fool, you have this versatility card, needing to be flexible. Every single person <laughs> has been getting this card. So, And there's a million cards in this deck. It's crazy. But what I would say is I feel we need to be kind of flexible in how we accomplish our goals, wishes, and dreams, just like I was saying. Because um, you know, if we're not, then obviously we'll be stuck. 
Uh, next, in the area of the unexpected, you have a self-made card. It says, you will become successful or rich by your own efforts. Love it. So definitely self-made here, uh, Gemini. I also feel that this could be in some other areas of your life as well. Like, I feel that if you've been through difficult relationship situations, that these situations have made you someone who's extremely valuable in relationships. Like, it's had a very positive effect, actually, even though it might be in negative situations. And I feel it's leading you to something that is like a reward, like a person who has also made themselves into something, something much more than what is typically available on the dating market, which isn't much, right? <laughs> I'm sure you can all agree that it's not, it's a, it's a war zone out there, right? And you don't want to be running around on these streets, as I always say. So, you know, you could be attracting a person who's like very worth it. You have the nine of wands, the two of pentacles and the strength card. I feel like there could be a Leo coming in for some of you. You have that sun card, not really the sun card, but still you have this card, page of wands. You know, you could be attracting a Leo, could be a little bit unexpected. I also feel like what's unexpected, like, I, you know what? I have a weird message popping to my head, Gemini, that you're just getting over something. And I don't even think it's like a heartbreak or anything like that. It's almost like you're just, sometimes like I think we have these breakthroughs in life where we just kind of like figure something out and it's something just clicks in our head. And that's what I have here. It's like, you're just getting over something. But I'm, I'm wondering if those words aren't even right. Like maybe you're figuring something out in business that makes your business blow up kind of very, very quickly. And again, I like to stress that, like, I don't think there are any shortcuts in life and I don't think anything just happens quickly. You've probably, you know, what you need to realize you've, if this is happening for you, you've probably been working in your business for years. So it's like years of work are finally paying off. And, you know, I kind of get that energy from your reading is that um, it's almost as if years and years of work are finally paying off for you. You have, here you go with the two of pentacles, years and years and years of work. Two of pentacles is hard work. It's kind of like an energy of work hard, play hard, but I kind of feel that things are just catching up for you, Gemini. You, you see this figure eight in the middle. It's like an infinity symbol and, you know, really just represents an equal exchange of energy, putting energy out, getting energy back. And, um, you know, I feel like that energy is finally catching up. Even, you know, again, that goes down to the chariot. So definitely a victory coming in for you. You have this nine of wands as well. I would continue to experiment Again, gone gone are the days where we can just do the same thing over and over and over again and expect to grow. You know, it's like I always tell a story of like my grandfather, he basically uh, was uh, didn't he almost had to go to war, but he didn't. And um, he started working at like a factory or something and he worked his way up from the bottom to the top and he did it in, you know, a record time, but he had like good work ethic, but he pretty much just did the same thing over and over and over again. Right. Um, but that's not really possible anymore. We have to be willing to experiment. I believe that we have to be able to iterate on our past successes as well. It's like, um, you know, if we're successful in business, we need to be able to take that success, duplicate it again, but maybe in a different way. Uh, same thing in relationships as well. We can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, things will get boring. Things will get stale. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, but what I would say is it's like we have to continue to evolve. I feel like we're in a time where probably we're evolving like faster than ever. <laughs> so keep up. And if there's any sign that could possibly keep up, it's you, Gemini, especially in this situation. With the Nine of Wands, you have this criticism card. Again, I feel this is everybody's fear right now. You know, we have Pluto entering to Aquarius. I talk about this a lot now. This will be in March of 2020, uh, 2023. And then again, in March of 2024, officially, or somewhere around there, it officially moves into Aquarius because it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn next year, 2023. And this is like the beginning of needing to get attention because of the Aquarian energy. Aquarius is the star. So I think, you know, people always ask me, what's my spiritual purpose? I always say like our spiritual purpose is to create our own reality. God lives through us based off the things that we create. That's what I believe. And uh, you have this higher power card here. That's why I'm talking about this. And, um, but if you really want something to do, I would say Aquarius energy, you know, research the star card and, you know, be an inspiration to other people, follow your North star, have a purpose, have something to work towards. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. And don't criticize yourself, <laughs> number one. And don't worry about what other people say, number two, with that criticism card. Because again, I think everybody's biggest fear with Pluto and Aquarius will be exposure, being exposed for being wrong, you know, all those things. 
With the Two of Pentacles, you have this acquisition card. I feel like you're acquiring a lot of success. I, there's a couple on this card. This is like my fancy couple card. So, <laughs> you know, could be like a fancy couple situation. Could be love coming in for you for sure, something long term. But I don't really feel love here. Honestly, I feel this is just acquisition. I feel like you are acquiring skills, but also uh, definitely could be increasing your finances. With the Strength card, you have this Resourcefulness card. I've been saying to everybody that I would be as resourceful as possible right now. And, and again, even if you make a billion dollars a year, as I've been saying, you know, just based off of like the energy, the government, uh, the recession, all that stuff, I wouldn't be going nuts, right? I wouldn't be going crazy, you know, spending money on it, like another new Ferrari or something like that. I would just, I don't think we have to be paranoid. I just think we need to be aware, right? I think having the awareness to say, I probably don't need another new car. I can probably wait for a better deal then that's what I'd be doing. I'd be looking for deals. Again, being resourceful is all about looking for a deal, a steal, or using your powers of negotiation to get a deal or a steal, especially if you're looking to spend money, even if it's on like your business or something like that. Um, so again, I wouldn't be paranoid. I would just be resourceful. Uh, next in the area of what's coming towards you, you have this higher power card. I, I literally feel there could be messages from like your in your dreams, your daydreams, from the universe, you literally have the judgment card, which yeah, that is your higher self angel on the judgment card talking to you. <laughs> so, you know, I would be writing down your dreams or your daydreams, any random thoughts that pop into your head during the day, for sure. You have the judgment card, the temperance card, and the chariot. Uh, another angel on the temperance card as well. I feel like the universe wants you to fix this situation, but it's not like, you know, you're fixing a relationship. That's not what I'm talking about. I feel like for some of you, is that you You like have something that you really want to accomplish in your life and you have the chariot. And I feel like the universe is like saying, you're not done yet on your, like if you have a goal to, you know, to stand out or to start a business or to do something bigger than yourself, I feel like this is saying like, you're not done yet. Um, those are, that, that's really all I'm getting. I was trying to get more, but <laughs> uh, nothing was coming in. So there you go. You're not done yet, Gemini. I feel like it's gonna lead to a victory, whatever this is, but you have to, again, temperance is about like massaging something into place. It's like if one way doesn't work, then you have to try another way. So, you know, it's kind of like about alchemy and turning one situation into another. I also, I think it's a great practice right now for everyone to turn like a no into a yes or to learn how to do that. Could be through negotiation. Uh, it could also be learning how to take negative situations and get the juice, the gold from those negative situations. I always say, you know, at the end of pain is success. And it's like, you know, what kind of success can we get out of something? Uh, that's Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher says at the end of pain is success. And, you know, I feel this is saying like, if you haven't gotten your gold out of your negative situations, then what are you doing? Like, I feel like you need to look at the challenges you've been through and say like, what did I learn? What did I get from this thing? And the chariot is a card of success. You also have the judgment card here. Again, I feel like your higher self is trying to communicate with you. This is your higher self angel right here. Um, you know, it could be coming in through dreams or daydreams. I also feel like, you know, I always get comments from people that are like, I don't have dreams. I'm like, okay, like um, then do something else like a stream of consciousness writing. Just like start writing on a piece of paper and don't think about it. Just put words out there. And you, I don't know, you might be dis surprised what you discover. We're not really talking necessarily about automatic writing here, although that could be something you do, but you know, just stream of consciousness, just write whatever words you think and just keep going until you can't any longer. Um, you might find some messages from your higher self in doing that. You have With the uh, judgment card, you have this convention card. Yeah, you have to break away from conventional ideas. I feel like your higher self wants you to do that as well. Um, I feel like your higher self is like saying that if you're doing the same thing you did today, yet yesterday, today, you're stuck, as John Taffer says, right? So I feel like you have to set yourself free. I'm almost getting like Eight of Swords energy. On the judgment card, those people are still standing in the coffin. So they really, you know, they do have to get out of the coffin. <laughs> uh, with the temperance card, you have the authority card. I feel like there could be authority figures that you feel are standing in your way. But like, are they really? Um, I would say no, I don't think anyone can really stop us from doing anything for the most part. Um, so, you know, definitely something that you should look at. Some of you could be becoming uh, an authority figure as well. With the chariot, you have this rebellion card. Again, I feel like you're, you know, it makes perfect sense. He's leaving the city. He is technically rebelling because he's get going away from something that he has always known. So I feel like a lot of you are taking action towards kind of like something new or something different. Uh, at the end here, four messages from your future self. You have this stillness card. I feel that there's peace and harmony 
coming in for you in the future. I feel like some of you might be a little bit worried about just the future in general. And I do feel like, well, part of me feels like your future self and your higher self, you have both of them showing up here because of this higher power card. Um, then, you know, what I would say is I feel like there could be some moments where you're kind of like panicking about the future. I feel like you need to make sure that you're doing what you can with what you got right now. It's like we can worry all day long about the recession. We can worry all day long about, you know, whatever Joe Biden's doing. We can worry all day long about what Elon Musk is doing and all these other people. But those people are external to us. They have nothing to do with us technically, right? And so what I would say is like, what can you do right now? I like, I keep reminding people, it's like, you know, the Aquarius energy, <laughs> it's like Aquarius is like more the individual, but it's like the collective, but I also feel like there are things that are affecting the individual. And I feel as individuals, we can change the collective, right? And, but we have to like do it. We have to take our power back. And that's what I feel like what a lot of you need to do with this energy is like take your power back and do what you can with what you got and not worry too much about things that you can't control. You have the Page of Wands, the Devil, and the Eight of Swords. How crazy is that? I didn't even see this Eight of Swords. I totally ignored it. Um, and I was saying, I was feeling Eight of Swords energy on that Judgment card a little bit, like a little bit stuck. Not too stuck, but, you know, just a little bit stuck. So I would stay open to, you know, I say Eight of Swords is about only seeing one way of doing things. You have the Versatility card here. So, you know, being open to different ways of doing things. Uh, with the devil, I feel like there are things inside of you that need to come out. Um, you know, I feel, number one, I would avoid any toxic connections from the past period. But the devil, you can see that these people have animal horns on their head. And the animal horns kind of represent our animal instincts, our baser instincts. And sometimes I feel that the devil kind of says we have something in our loins some something we want to create, something that is more root chakra energy. We need to take that, bring it up to our head and kind of like express it into the world. So the devil is actually really good for work and career because it is Saturn energy and it's really not a bad card. And what I would say here is if you're working on something, there could be a lot of success there for you. Uh, you also have this page of wands. Um, you know, page of wands I feel is like enthusiasm returning to your life. I feel like your future self wants you to know that you know, if you've been feeling down, <laughs> if you've been feeling like there's no hope or anything like that, I feel there's like a, a return of happiness and enthusiasm and all those things coming in for you. With the uh, Page of Wands, you have the seduction card. I do feel like someone, like if you're looking for love, I do feel there could be a person coming in for you. It's kind of funny. This card's been coming up a lot. This card is Jupiter in Pisces. We have Jupiter in Pisces for a little while longer now. It leaves, you know, before the end of December, officially into Aries. And, you know, what I would say is I feel like once Jupiter leaves Pisces on the 20th or whatever day it is, um, you know, then, you know, there could that's that could be the start of maybe a new love affair, or new options in love for you. With the devil card, you have the exaltation card. This card is like a card of something being divinely guided into your life, something that is like meant for you. And But it has to be created. That's what I feel with the devil card is like there's something that you want to create. It could be a new business, a new job, could be a new relationship, could be anything. I just feel like you have to do it. <laughs> with the eight of swords, you have the excitement card. Definitely more excitement coming in for you, especially with that page of wands. I mean, this reading fits in very well with the astrology, I would say as well, because... I think we're all just a little bit like a board and I feel we all want something maybe new or different in our life. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like is could be coming in for you here. Uh, in your, I'm going to pull five main themes now. Uh, your first one, you have this wedge card. It says someone is trying to come between you and a friend or something you want. I would definitely be careful of that. I mean, Mars retrograde in your sign. Definitely. I would be careful of like anyone who's trying to come in between you and someone else. Could be a friend, could also be a lover as well. But I would be careful, you know, I would just be careful of people like talking crap about, you know, peop other people in your life. It, like I would ask yourself if you have a person who's talking poorly about someone else in your life, I would be saying like, why? Like, why are they talking this way about this person? It could be legitimate, but, you know, don't just blindly listen to what people say. Uh, next, you have this February card. This card says February on it. And you also have this bowl card. It says plenty of material things. So by the time we get to February of 2023 for the people in the back, then I feel that's when you could really notice an increase in your abundance with this bowl card. So love it. Uh, you also have this force card. that says muddled, unclear thinking. I definitely feel you need to be more clear. <laughs> I feel, but I kind of feel there is clarity coming in for you after a period of confusion, just in general. Uh, you have this career card. Your career could be important at this time. Um, there is a lot of good career stuff. Uh, I would take the lead in any area, any 
career opportunity that you can. If you have a career job, or even if you have a business, I think they're just intuitively, I feel there could be opportunities where like your boss is looking for someone to take the lead. I would do it. It's for you. Uh, next, you have this tent card and it says temporary situation. What is this temporary situation? Uh, well, this says great personal sorrow. So if you're sad about something or if you've gone through a heartbreak or something along those lines, then I would say that situation is temporary. But um, that's that, Gemini. Pretty interesting. So uh, thank you for being here, Gemini. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.